look at odd and even functions and see how the simplifications for these um, Fourier coefficients occur. Now, it's, it's, students tend to like this because in many cases, if you have special functions, well, you don't need to calculate three of those things, a0, an, and bn. You may only need to calculate one. So it's a good time-saving technique, uh, if possible. Okay. We use integration to calculate our Fourier coefficients. It makes sense to streamline the process. Okay, well, our Fourier, um, uh, the Fourier coefficient formulae involve integration from minus L to positive L, where L is some number. This is known as a symmetric interval. Okay, minus L to positive L, a symmetric interval. Now, if we are integrating so-called odd or even functions, then integrals over symmetric intervals simplify. Okay, so let me just give you some examples because um, in my experience, students forget what, what odd and even functions are. Okay. Suppose g is a function and it satisfies this uh, uh, condition for all x. We call such a function odd, an odd function. Now this is quite algebraic, but um, let me, the way I think of odd functions is a very graphical way. Let me give you an example. The graph of an odd function has the following property. Here I've just drawn in the line the, the graph y equals x. Okay. Draw the graph of g and rotate it 180 degrees around the origin. If it returns the original graph that you started with, then the function's an odd function. Okay, so as a real simple example, think about this function here. If I just take that orange curve and rotate it 180 degrees about the origin, I get the same line that I started with. Okay, the graph is the same. So this is an odd function. We can also speak of even functions if this condition is satisfied for all x. When I think of, um, uh, to decide whether a function's even or not, I, again, I just um, think of a picture and its graph. Essentially, the graph of an even function is reflected in the y-axis. So let's just draw a real simple function, say uh, x squared. Okay, you can see that there's some reflection going on in the y-axis. So this is an even function. Okay, now some common functions that we'll deal with, apart from these sorts of things, sine n pi x on L, or just the sine function. That is an odd function. Okay, again, just say take the sine curve and rotate it 180 degrees, it'll give you back the original function that you started with. Okay, and again, say cosine. The cosine function is an even function. Okay? So these are going to be very important for our um, integration and simplification of Fourier series calculations. Okay, now, some really important 
elements of integrals of odd and even functions over symmetric intervals. Suppose I have an odd function, g, and I integrate it over, over a symmetric interval, minus l to l. Well, the value is 0 there. What, why is that true? Well, I can draw a little picture, I guess. Suppose I've got an odd function. Say it looks like, uh, I don't know, I'm just going to draw a real simple odd function. Okay. Again, think of it in terms of area. The area, uh, the signed area here and the, and the area here are going to be the same, just with a different sign. So if you integrate from minus L to L, the areas are going to cancel. So they'll all add up to give zero. Okay, now I've just drawn sort of straight line segments here. You can have curvy, curvy ones. Um, Okay, so in other words, the integral is zero. Now for even functions, the integral from minus L to L is just twice the integral from zero to L. Now, wh why would you want to make that connection? Well, zero in an integral sign is usually easy to deal with. Okay? So sometimes this will be much simpler than this because you've got, a, you've got a zero in the integral sign. So in the limit of integration, right? So just to say, say draw an even function, let's just draw it like that. The area there is the same as the area there, right? So if you just integrate from zero to L, um, it'll be the, and multiply by 2, it'll be the same as integrating over the entire interval. Okay? Now, some very important properties of odd and even functions and their products. Okay, this is gold. You're going to use this all the time. Okay? Let's say I'm multiplying an odd function with another odd function. Well, can we say anything about their product? Well, we can. The product will, give you, will be an even function. Similarly, if I multiply two even functions together, I get an even function. And if I multiply to uh, an odd function with an even function, I get an odd function. Now, these are, these are really important. So I'm not talking about numbers. I'm talking about odd and even functions. Okay? <laughs> now, how does this help? Well, going back to, to these calculations, cosine is an even function. So depending on what this kind of function is, I can look at their product, and then maybe it's an odd function, maybe the product's an even function. And then I can simplify it. So these three things are going to be very important for our study. Okay, a couple of time-saving lemmas. Suppose f's an even function, and we want to compute the Fourier series for f. Okay, so under the usual assumptions on f, if f's an even function, then The a sub naught is not, uh, well, you, it, you, it is this, but because it's even, what you do is you multiply the whole thing by 2 and integrate from 0 to big L. So that's where this comes from. So there's the, the sort of 2's disappeared now. Also, the a sub n's is this integral. 
Again, we've multiplied, taken this one, multiplied it by 2 and integrated from 0 to big L. And the B sub n's are all 0. So the format of your Fourier series would just involve cosine. So this is sometimes called a, a, a Fourier cosine series because all the B sub n's are 0. So let me show you why that works. Okay, so I'll just, I'll just show you why this works for, for the first case, and the second case involves odd functions. I'll leave that up to you. Okay, so... So this is odd, f's, uh, sorry, e, f's an even function, I beg your pardon, so it's two times that. The integral from 0 to L of f of x. Now that's the easy part. The a sub n's are a little bit harder. Okay, now just look at this line for a minute. The product of the integrand, right? Cosine is an even function, and f is assumed to be an even function. So an even times an even function gives us an even function. Okay, so okay, so essentially we're integrating an even function, so I can multiply by two and integrate from zero to L. And I get the formula there. Okay. What about the B sub n's? That's the only that's the last thing I'm going to show. The B sub n's are defined in this way. Here I've got an even function times an odd function. So, it's, so, so the product's mixed. The product will be an odd function. Okay, so the product gives us an odd function. So I'm integrating an odd function over a symmetric interval. Zero. Okay, and in fact, in an exam, let's say you have an odd function and you want to calculate the Fourier series, you can just write down a sub naught zero, a sub n zero. You can just write it down because the function is odd. Okay, you don't have to do the calculations. You have to justify why you're doing it, but you don't have to um, uh, do all the steps. Okay, students love it. One thing rather than three things. Mm, pretty good. Okay? But you've got to be on top of your odd and even functions. Okay? You won't be given these in the exam, right? You'll be given a formula uh, for the coefficients, but you won't be given these shortcuts, okay? So it's up to you to come up with those. Okay, let's have a look at this at work then. If f, say, is defined on this uh, non-symmetric interval, then we can extend the uh, f to make it an odd or an even function. And then we can obtain the uh, corresponding Fourier cosine series or the Fourier sine series expansion. And in fact, this is what we'll do when we revisit the heat equation will have some sort of initial temperature defined on an interval like this. And depending on what we want to do, we can extend that function to the interval minus L to L as either an odd or an even function, and then make it periodic. So let's consider the following example. I've got a function defined on this sort of half open interval, and the function is just the x function. 
we're, uh, we're asked to extend f as an odd function, f sub o as an even function, f sub e, such that uh, these functions have period 2. We're also asked to sketch their graphs on this interval and calculate the corresponding Fourier series. And the very last thing we're asked to do is to uh, show that this infinite sum is equal to pi squared on 8. So this is quite a long problem. Uh, I'm going to do the even uh, function first. And if I've got time at the end, I'll go back and do the, uh, the odd function. Uh, if I don't get time to do that, then I'll leave it as a, an independent learning exercise for you to do. Okay. Uh, oh, sorry, F sub E. So let's just w worry about the uh, even extension first. Okay, well, what I'm going to do is sketch this function on this interval and then see if I can ex suitably extend it. Okay, so on this interval, it's just something like this. And what I want to do is make this into an even function. So I want the graph to be reflected in the vertical axis. So I can do it in the following way. Okay, so now what I want to do is make that function periodic. Okay, so you can see I've drawn it in here for these two, um, uh, th th this unit, uh, this interval of, of two unit length, what I can do is copy it, move it two units and paste. Copy it, move it two units and paste. So I'll get something like this. Okay? So there I've sketched the even extension, f sub e, over the interval minus 3 to positive 3. Now, we're asked to find the Fourier series of this function f sub e. Now, firstly, we note that, yes, this, this function is an even function. And so if we go back to our lemma, well, if we have an even function, the a sub naught's this, the a sub n's this, and the b sub n's are all zero. So for, for this particular example, we only have to uh, do these two integrals rather than three. Now before we actually um, calculate those Fourier series, let's actually um, write down an expression for f sub e. Well, you can see that it's x on this interval and it's minus x on that interval. So once I've defined it on the interval minus 1 to 1 and I know that the function's periodic, then I've defined the, the uh, f sub e suitably. Okay, and f sub e of x plus two equals of, e, of x plus two equals f sub e of x. So that's my periodic uh, condition. Okay, well, let's calculate the Fourier series. Since f sub e is even, the previous lemma tells us that the b sub n's are 0. Furthermore, 
the A sub naught is given by this with big L equals 1, because remember, the period is 2L, so, so this big L is half the period. So in this case, our um, 2L would be 2, so big L would be 1. Okay, so for us it is the following. Now on this interval, my function f sub e is just uh, x. So you can think about just calculating the area between the x-axis and the, the graph. So you've got a triangle, so it's going to be something like this. Okay, now, but pretty easy. The real work is with the a sub n's. So the A sub n's, again, using our lemma, is given by this, with big L equals 1. So, putting in L equals 1, and using f sub e on this interval here, again, it's just the x function, we get the following. Okay. So now, we're at a stage where we need to do this integration, and we're going to use integration by parts. Okay, so for this, let's choose, say, u to be x, and v prime or v dash to be cosine. Okay, so if we make those two choices, then I can calculate u prime, which is just one, and I can calculate v just by integration. So if I integrate cosine n pi x with respect to x, I'll get something like sine n pi x, and I just need to multiply by 1 on n pi. Okay, so using our integration by parts formula, it's u times v minus the integral of the product of this, these two functions here. Okay? All right, well, let's look at this first term. When I, when I substitute in x equals 1, I'll get sine n pi here. Now, sine n pi is always 0 for each uh, positive, say, integer n. When I substitute in x equals 0, this will also be 0. So this whole thing just contributes 0. Over here, I've still got one more integration to go. Okay? So let's integrate this again with respect to x, and I'll get something like the following. Now, when I integrate sine, I'm going to get minus cosine. So with that minus sign, I'll get a plus. And again, I've just got to divide by um, n pi. Okay, so down here, if I substitute in x equals 1, I'll get cosine n pi. And when I substitute in x equals 0, I'll get cosine 0, which is 1. So if I want to simplify in here now, I can um, take this out the front. I'll get cosine n pi minus 1. Now, Cosine n pi can be um, simplified in a sense. It just oscillates between positive 1 and negative 1. Okay, so cosine n pi can be simplified to the following. 
minus 1 all to the n. Okay, well, you'll see in this square bracket, if n's even, I'll get 1 minus 1. So if n's even, this whole thing's 0. Right? If n's odd, in the square brackets, I'll get minus 1 minus 1, so minus 2. So in that case, the whole thing um, will be minus 4 on n pi all squared. So let's just break that down into two cases. Okay, so we've computed now our Fourier coefficients. Let's just recap for a second. Because our function is even, the B sub n's are all zero. We've calculated the A sub naught to be one half. And we've, after a bit of work, we've calculated the A sub n's to be, well, zero when n's even, and minus four in n pi squared when n is odd. So, let's write down our Fourier series. Now again, since we're dealing with an, um, with an even function, the, all the B, B sub n's are zero, so we will expect to get a series only involving cosines. So this is sometimes called a Fourier cosine series. So, the Fourier series for our function is just the following. And in our case, big L is 1, so we'll get the following. Now, I am just going to use this representation first, and then I'll move into this in a second. Okay. Now, in this sum n, sometimes we're just adding lots of zeros in. In particular, when n is zero, uh, sorry, when n is even, we're going to get lots of zeros here. So what we would like to do is sum over the non-zero terms. Otherwise, we're just adding in lots of zeros. So what I can do is suitably simplify this just by summing over the odd values of n and replacing this, which was here, with this. Okay? And a standard practice is, well, instead of just summing over the odd values of n, let's sum over, you know, 1, 2, 3, etc. So let's introduce a new um, dummy variable, if you like. Okay, and what I can do in here is replace n with an odd value, 2k minus 1. So, if I do that, then I'll get the following. Okay, now if I wanted to sort of uh, simplify this a bit more, I can take the minus four on pi squared out the front, and this would be my series. Okay? Now, we would expect you to be able to come up with that representation. Okay, up here, 
This is still correct, but it's not the, the in my opinion, the optimal um, representation of our Fourier series. Okay. Let's have a look at this question now. Now, this, th this part of the question is going to involve Fourier's theorem. Okay, in particular, these ideas down here. Okay, now we're going to use the graph of this function and our Fourier series to come up with this representation here. So let me call this uh, star, let's say. Okay, now let's just have a look at our Fourier series. You can see here I've got some sum involving 1 on 2k minus 1 all squared and a cosine. Okay, now this series involves 1 on 2k minus 1 all squared. So if we just pick a suitable value for x, what we would ho hope is we can choose some suitable value for x to make this always 1. If I cover that up, then I get this, okay, which is kind of like what, what's down here on the left. Okay, so let's try to do that. Well, there's a number of choices for x. I'm just going to choose x equals 0. Okay, I know that if x equals 0, cosine of 0 is always 1, so um, this will suitably simplify. You don't have to make that choice, though. You could make other choices uh, for your x point. Okay, our function f sub e does satisfy the conditions of Fourier's theorem. It is uh, two L periodic with L equals one, and f sub e and its derivative are piecewise continuous. Okay. Hence, if our original function is continuous at a point, then the value of the Fourier series and the function are the same at that point. Whereas if we have a, dis a jump discontinuity at uh, the point of interest, then the Fourier series is equal to the average of these two limits, the right-hand limit and the left-hand limit. So let's have a look at our original function and see what's happening, say, near x equals 0. Well, as x, f sub e isn't defined at 0, but that's not a problem. Okay? As we approach 0 from the right, what's happening to the, the curve? Well, the curve is approaching 0. If we approach 0 from the left, the curve is also approaching 0. So our right-hand limit is zero. Our left-hand limit is also zero. The average of those two limits is zero, and by Fourier's theorem, the value of the Fourier series at zero must equal um, the average of these two limits. Okay. So let's write that down. Okay, by this I mean the right-hand limit as uh, we approach zero. This is zero. And the left-hand limit's also zero. Hence, by Fourier's theorem, the value of the Fourier series at zero is equal to the average of the limits, which in this case is just zero. Okay, well how does that help us out? Well, here's our Fourier series. If we plug in x equals zero, this becomes one, and from here the whole thing has got to equal zero. Okay. 
Okay, cosine of, if you plug in x equals 0, cosine of 0 is always 1. So, if I say take this to the other side and then multiply both sides by pi squared on 4, then we get the star identity that we want. Okay? So, this means that um, we have complete information about this particular series of constants. We know it converges and we actually have its exact value, pi squared on 8. So this is a big advantage that Fourier series provide over, say, first year um, analysis of series. They can actually come up with exact values for series. We've done the even extension, so let's go back and do the odd extension. So here's our function defined on this interval. We want to extend it as an odd function with period 2, sketch the graph, and then calculate the associated Fourier series. So let's do that. Okay, so our function to start off with is something like this. Okay, and what we want to do is extend that function so that it's odd and periodic with period 2. Okay, so to do that, um, what we really want is to sort of form some curve over, over on this side of the y-axis such that if you rotate the whole graph 180 degrees, you get the same graph that you started with. So, I'm going to extend it like this. And because I want to have it periodic, I'll just sort of define it on the interval, uh, the sort of open interval on this end. And if I draw in the other parts just by copying and pasting, I should get something like this. Okay, so that now is the odd extension of our function. That's also periodic. Now, if I wanted to write down an explicit form for my function, say an algebraic form, I would write down something like this. Okay. I'm just going to um, define it on, on two parts of the, uh, two, two intervals here. So it's the original function on this interval. And then it's also the original, this is still the x curve here, but I'm going to define it on this interval. Okay? Now I haven't defined it at x equals minus 1 because that's sort of built into the periodicity of the function. You don't want the function defined um, two ways at one point. Okay, so it's okay to leave that there. Now, in the other um, example with the even function, you could have a less than or equals to or a strictly less than there. It's okay in this case. Both, both a, a strictly less than or less than or equals to is okay there. But for this one, it's not... Um, okay. Okay. So let's go through and calculate our um, associated Fourier series. Now, because our function is an odd function, 
The lemma that we were looking at last time tells us that our Fourier series will only involve signs. Okay, so this means that the A noughts are all zero and the ANs are all zero, and my B sub formula here. Okay? So we're looking for a sign series in this case. So the A sub noughts are all zero, the A sub n's are zero, and the only thing we have to calculate is the B sub n's. And because of the nature of odd functions and the integrals involved, we're not integrating here from minus L to L, although you can if you want. It's, it's twice times the integral of, uh, from zero to L. So, so this is what we have. Okay. All right, so all we need to do now is work out what our period, what our period is. Well, the period's 2, and L, big L, is half the period. So big L's just 1 here. So F sub O on, on uh, the interval 0 to 1 is just the X function. And so we're going to use integration by parts. Okay, so let's make a choice. Let, 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 let's make u equal to x and v dash or v prime equal to sine n pi x. Okay, so um, to use our integration by parts formula, we need four things. We've chosen two. Let's calculate the other two parts. Okay, so if u is x, then u prime is just 1, and v is just the integral of all of this with respect to x. So I'm going to get something like a minus cosine in there. So now let's use the integration by parts formula. So it's... Uh, u times v, that times that. Minus the integral of the product of the two things we just calculated. Okay? All right, well, let's plug in some um, values here. When x equals 0, we're going to get 0. For the other case, we're going to get something like uh, cos n pi down here. And if I look carefully at this remaining integral, I know when I integrate cosine n pi x, I'm going to get sine n pi x. Right, and I plug in x equals 1 and x equals 0, what, what is it going to contribute? Nothing, right? It's going to contribute nothing. So I, I, I kind of already know that this is actually just going to all become 0. Okay? So if I sub in x equals 1 and x equals 0, I'm going to get sine n pi. Sine pi, that, that, that's always 0 for every integer n. And sine of 0 is 0. So this last term just gives me 0. And what about this term? Well, we know a way of simplifying cos n pi. Cos n pi is either positive 1 or negative 1. Okay? Uh, in fact, I can write it as minus 1 all to the n. It's a nice simplification. So if I replace this with minus 1 all to the n, and say bring the minus sign out the front, I'll get the following.
Okay? So, let's review what we've calculated. A sub noughts and A sub n's are all zero. We didn't have to calculate them. All we need to do is say, F's, we've got an odd function here. Therefore, the integrals associated with A sub naught and A sub n are always zero. Through some integration, we've calculated the B sub n's. Let's write down the corresponding Fourier sine series for our function. Okay, remember in our case, big L is 1. So what I can do, I can actually just sort of move this out, uh, move the negative 2 on pi out the front of the summation sign, so I can sort of write it like this. Okay? So there is our Fourier sign series for our odd periodic extension. 